Hi, Miss Chetty. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. This is Miss Hamilton, our wonderful acting head teacher, English. And Miss Chetty is our school librarian, who we are very lucky at English to have on staff. Uh, but she has the assessment notifications for all faculties with her in the library to assist students in their breaks and study periods. Today, we'd like to go over the Year 11 Advanced Assessment and break down question two of four in the writing portfolio. One of the first things I always get asked is, why do I need to do this assessment task? Okay, so this, the first of our three assessments here, and if we go to the slide here, which shows that we're studying the module reading to write, which is uh, really building the skill set that we need for year 12, the module called the craft of writing. In reading to write, we are having students build and develop their analytical, imaginative, discursive and persuasive writing. Why you ask? Because with the new syllabus, uh, the craft of writing module requires them to be able to write on one, possibly two of those in an assessment as well as their trial and HSC question. Okay, brilliant. As you mentioned, we're going to focus on one out of the four, but they only have to do two for the actual assessment task. So the question for the second one um, addresses the concept of drawing on key image or motif from Ursula Le Guin's The One Who Walk Away from Omelas. Explore the interplay between a gift and a curse in your own imaginative writing. Great, thanks Karuna. So that's, that's the first part of this question. And in the second, we've set some structural aspects to help students plan and scaffold this. Here it says, take care to structure just two of the following. Either an opening that sets the scene, mood and atmosphere, a middle and complication, uh, and then a symbolic ending. So it's 600 words with the 10% rule, which isn't a lot of writing time if you're crafting the power of suggestion and attention to detail. So we've asked that students look at just one of these moving up to the complication or moving from the complication to a consciously resolved or unresolved ending. And should that be in sequential order? They should stay with the, the concepts in sequential order to make it easier? Good question. If a student wanted to, to jump from an opening, craft an opening, and then move to a crafted ending of a narrative, they could do that. I would suggest that they use a device like a time shift, either a, a fast forward or a flashback that enables there to be cohesion and flow between those so okay. that the piece still hangs together. As we've said down here in the adjunct, it's fine for students' piece here to read like an extract of a larger, of a larger uh, work. Wonderful. Because within the question, you do break it down to two, for me, concepts. You have drawing on a key image or motif, and then you have the interplay between a gift and a curse. Okay, great. So at the heart of the module, it's reading. Reading Le Guin's great uh, short story of the speculative fiction genre to inform their own writing. In class, we've been breaking that down. What uh, Students are probably identifying an image and a, a motif pretty easily. Very quickly, again, with the utopian setting, they're looking at things like the festival, um, images of music, you know, everything like that that's created that utopian society. Okay, great. And then probably a little more complex is this idea of uh, gift and curse conceptual framework. What what are your students seeing there? Yeah, they're bringing it very much back into a 21st century understanding for themselves. So they're looking at things like bullying, homelessness, and the understanding that someone is always in pain for someone else to have pleasure. Okay, great. And, and that really is that confronting uh, core of, of this story where you have uh, everyone with the gift of being happy and uh, the prosperity, that blessing, but on the condition that one sole designated child must suffer for everybody else's happiness. Uh, okay, so if a student then takes those ideas and reworks this framework to do something of their own, we would ask them not to choose something obvious or predictable, to really stay away from the cliche. An example of uh, a gift curse interplay could be introversion and that idea of the introvert. You might start with an opening, opening that sets this scene and mood uh, where we see the introvert as being dismissed by others or overlooked and, and abandoned, and then move up to a shift uh, with positioning the, the reader and the marker then to see that 
go inside somehow, dig deeper into the internal and see that introversion here really is a gift uh, in terms of listening deeply and the art of seeing the world uh, deeply, seeing things that most of us miss out on. Okay, wonderful. So then within that, they've addressed that concept. We now have to draw it a key image or a motif. Okay, to weave that in and then draw out that idea of introversion, uh, a strategy is to use metaphor and simile. An example of metaphor, he was no longer seen as the abandoned instrument left in the back corner collecting dust on the shelf. He was the flute in the front row of the orchestra with a melody all of his own. Beautiful. So again, we're looking at that sophistication of language. We're looking at showing, not telling, and actually addressing the question. Great. So metaphor really has that power of suggestion, not spelling it out, explaining it. And then the second time a student might like to weave this flute metaphor in could be through simile with the word like or as in the comparison. It was as if the music from the flute was given the gift of flight to rise and soar above, to see and hear the world anew. And then notice that the way this is written up here is with uh, truncated sentences and crafted punctuation to really draw those ideas out. Because it is a concept reading to write, so we want to see their writing skills. That's right. However, in the question, it does address the concept of your own imaginative writing. So within that, do you want them to focus on their own new idea and concept or do we allow us an understanding within the text that we've been studying? Students really have that choice. They can completely uh, move to a different context with their writing or they can appropriate, if they like, some of the ideas that Le Guin has explored, that idea of walking away or standing up and uh, making a stand. So really, it's just about coming back to the key demands of the question, this motif and the interplay, and then structuring it like this to meet that marking criteria and really succeed in this task. Wonderful. Thank you so much for explaining that. Thank you. Thank you.